All right, folks, welcome back. We're getting to Towson Tigers head coach Rob Ambrose with us. Coach, uh, last year, uh, seven and four in the in overall, five and three in the conference. Uh, just talk about last year. What do you guys have to work on this year to, to improve on that record? Just staying healthy. Probably uh, health wise, kept us from being at least eight and three, if not nine and two. And uh, while it was a good year in preparation, we have to find a way to play as hard as we do and stay healthy to be able to compete for all of the wars, not just some of them. Looking at your schedule, we have two, two hot days around here, so I guess you guys are getting used to it because you're going out to South Florida in the first game of the year, you know, Tampa. What do you guys got to do going down to South Florida and play a really tough uh, Bulls team that almost knocked off Florida State last year and basically was a great team in that American Conference? Uh, acclimate ourselves to the heat. I hope it's as hot as it humanly can be in Baltimore for as long as it can be. Give us a chance to be able to give some congruency to South Florida weather. And, uh, it's bad enough playing in South Florida. It's even worse playing early. And uh, I think that'll be the biggest thing. And how we hydrate for the weeks prior, how we eat for the weeks prior, are going to have a direct correlation how well we can play first game of the year. Talk about your running back, your stud. You know, Victor's there. Uh, he's a very good running running back. You know, just just like the other guy you had there, West. You know, just seems like you guys are pumping out running backs. You know, like you know, it's going to turn into running back you sooner or later instead of you know other names. So uh, just talk about his uh, his uh, what he brings to the field and what he brings off the field. Well, on the field, it's tremendous physicality. He's ridiculously strong, and he enjoys being strong. And, uh, given the choice between making you miss or running you over, he will tell you that straighter line to the end zone. And he's a nice way of saying that he likes to run people out. Uh, off the field, he's, he's I could say he's a leader, and he is, but what he really is a great, great person. He's been nominated for the uh, good, you know, All-American Good Works team because of what he does off the field. That he believes, as I do, that with all the all the gifts that we've been given, that we have a responsibility to try to make change, positive change, make a difference. And he does that really, really well. Talk about your quarterback. Uh, you got a gift uh, this past recruiting class. You had somebody from uh, the Oregon Ducks transforming to you guys mm-hmm. to play. Uh, what did he bring to uh, spring practice and now for the fall practice coming up? What did he bring from what he learned out of Oregon? We didn't, he didn't get here until May, so we didn't see him in the spring. He was finishing up in Oregon. and uh, He's had a good summer. He's been working on been working on the playbook and he seems to, to know it. He, he comes across very knowledgeable, very intelligent. It's proof of being the pudding. Put some pads on and see what he can do with the pads on. He hasn't taken a snap in college yet, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, talk about your injuries and talk about how you guys can overcome that this season. And if you do overcome it, then how do you guys, well, how do you think you guys are going to do this season as a team? I think we had, we had a bunch of kids that um, didn't quite understand the difference between pain and injury. Injury is injury. It keeps you from being able to play. It's, it's detrimental to your existence if you want to keep playing. And we don't let players play with injury. We're a great medical staff. Some of these guys had never been hit real hard in their life. They had to learn some degree of toughness. And, uh, we talked about that in the spring. That we'd have been a tougher football team last fall. That uh, The nicks and bumps and bruises don't keep you from playing. If they do, well, you're not a very good team. We had to grow through that for some of our younger guys, and they have a great attitude moving forward. They understand that uh, it's not about how well you play when your body is 100%. Hell, by the time we get to the end of October, there's not a football team in America a player on that team whose body is 100%. And they have to learn that it's how well do you play when your body's not 100%. That's the determining difference when you make a playoff run. And they're learning from some of the veterans that came before them. I, I think we made great strides growing last year in that area. So, so what's a couple things that you guys can do this year in order to maybe get one or two more wins? Oh, goodness. Well, I think we need to throw the ball better. That, uh, we did okay last year. We didn't hurt ourselves, but we didn't necessarily always help ourselves. And uh, I think if we have the ability to spread the ball around a little bit more, it's probably going to help the running game and help the defense. One last question for you. I was looking at your newcomers of the year. You have a kid from our area, in Hartford County, from Bel Air, uh, Jordan Floyd came from UConn. Mm-hmm. What type of player is he? About to find out. He was injured and uh, finished his career at UConn. He's got one year to play. I've seen him over the summer working out. He certainly looks the part. 
Yeah. Now we said, just like everybody else, got to put that helmet on, put the shoulder pads on, and see what we can do. Well, good luck this year. Hopefully, uh, you know, good luck with your trip to South Florida, and hopefully you can uh, bring off a shocker like you did a couple years ago with taking on UConn, and hopefully you have a good, great season. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, good luck, Coach. Thanks. That's Coach Ambers, the head coach of Towson University. I know every year I was kidding him in the first couple of years that I had eligibility left because he didn't have any quarterbacks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, can you just give me Joe Montana's number. That's all I say. Yeah. yeah give me number sixteen. Yeah, you'll see Joe coming out, coming out of me, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. So thanks for tuning in to us here at the CA Football Media Day here in beautiful M&T Bank Stadium. This is all purple and black here, where the uh, where the Ravens uh, play their home games, and uh, they do play they do play a couple of college football games. Last year they had a uh, the Maryland Terrapins playing. Um, Playing Penn State here, and a couple of years ago, Maryland took on West Virginia and ran them over you know, here at MT Bank Stadium. But uh, this is a uh, great facility here, right across the street, right next door to Cam and Yarns. And speaking of Cam and Yarns, the Orioles are taking on the uh, the Colorado Rockies. The Colorado Rockies you know, coming into town. With, uh, they beat them last night by a score of three to two on a uh, it looked like a pass ball. Yeah, like you see like a lot of walk off pass balls this year in baseball. You're like you don't see like you know normal walk off homers or anything. It's always pass balls or a balk. You know? Why is that? I don't know. Yeah, I, I would like to know. I would like to know about that too. You know, we, we come up the uh, come up to that thing. So we're gonna uh, get ready to hopefully get the Richmond head coach with us, uh, folks uh, from beautiful Rock. Uh, Richmond, Virginia, the Queen City, where I just was there the other day on the bus. So we're going to see if we can get him on the air here. So, uh, hey, yes, how are you doing? Good. This is live radio, folks. Anything, you know, we, we will. We live radio? Yeah, we don't stop for oh anything. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we moved up in the world. <laughs> <laughs> So we, are, we have the Richmond's head coach, Coach Rockto, with us. Uh, coach, last year, great season, 10-4, and 6-2 and two overall. You went out to, uh, you were a semifinalist, went out there to play a North Dakota State uh, team with that guy who works is now the quarterback in, in Philadelphia with the Eagles. So what did you see watching him playing, you know, you know in full game, you know? Face to face. Well, he didn't play, so you know he was out all year last year. I think he played the first two games for them, then he was injured. Um, but their whole setup is really more geared toward uh, their overall physicality. It's an extremely physical football team. It's a very um, mature football team. They have a way of being able to, to redshirt classes and create depth. And then it's really the environment. That place is extraordinary in terms of uh, how loud it gets and the uh, knowledge of the fans. And I've had the privilege of, you know, coaching in the NFL. I, I coached in the Sugar Bowl, Fiesta Bowl, and and that, that Fargo Dome was as loud, if not louder, than any of those other events or venues I've been in. Well, this year you're up against another ACC opponent, you know, the uh, coach uh, Bronco Mendenhall and the Virginia Cavaliers out there in Charlottesville. You're in the, you're from that area because you went to Liberty, you were the coach in Liberty, so you're you're familiar with the the mountains and Shenandoah Valley and all that stuff. So, uh, what do you want to bring out of that game against Virginia? Well, I have a lot of history at Virginia. I was the uh, on staff there at Al Grove for five years. I was the associate head coach, and then. Uh, Uh, went to Liberty. I was in Lynchburg for six years and now five years in Richmond. Uh, So I've been in the state of Virginia now going on 16 seasons. So I certainly have uh, great respect for the University of Virginia, Uh, great respect for uh, Coach Mendenhall. And uh, he has a plan. He has a model. He knows exactly what he wants to do. And as I'm sitting in state here, I can watch him put together his plan and put his model into motion and I'm seeing it and following it and I'm sure he's going to do a great job uh, there at UVA. Do you think his offense that he had in BYU, he was there for so many years at BYU, do you think it's going to adapt to the East Coast and you might see the Davis team lighting up the scoreboard? I think that he'll stay true to who he is and uh, it's a great question though and it's one of the difficulties of 
playing the BCS game in the opener. Um, I've had some years where we played the BCS school second when they had a new coach come in, and at least you got to see what they wanted to do. Uh, so I think he's just going to want to stay true to who he is and what he does, and he's going to bring his BYU system, and then he'll recruit to that system and then develop their players to play in that system. And I think that's the way that he'll go about putting his team together. So look at that big-time Virginia game, okay? What, what do you think are some key things that you guys are going to need to do in order to, to upset Virginia? Well, I think it always starts with your ability to control the football. You've, uh, you, you cannot be out there and put your defense in bad positions through the course of the game. you got to control the ball. you got to possess the ball. And you got to be able to play some field position. You can't put your defense out there in short fields. And I think one of the biggest lessons you learn over the years is you've got to have a good plan in the kicking game. Uh, you know, last year we went up to Maryland. I thought we had a good plan, but we just really got uh, destroyed by an All-American punt returner, and we just couldn't quite get the ball far enough away from him, and he had an extraordinary day. So you can't give that team the big plays, the momentum plays in a football game when you know you're going to have to be at your best to win. So since Virginia now has a new coach, Brock Mendehall, and are your players looking at this like, okay, there's a new coach there, he might not not like implement everything the first game, or what's your mindset of your players going into that first game? Well, I would say right now um, our focus is going into the season. You know, we have yet to even begin to talk about anything that would be specific to Virginia. You know, our guys are talking about the season, the CAA. You know, it's an interesting thing because I, I see it all the time. Like, we don't have any goal anywhere that says we need to win the BCS game. I mean, our goals are specific to competing for the CAA championship and winning in the postseason. Those have always been my goals. And, you know, we've been fortunate over the years to be in the CAA or the championship conference hunt a number of times. So if you're in the hunt in the CAA to win the championship, you're going to be in a hunt to get in the playoffs. And if you're in a hunt to get in the playoffs, you've got a chance to be ranked you know, high in, in the national polls. Now, obviously, a game like Virginia could go a long way in spicing up your resume, but it really isn't a game that we focus on until we kind of get into the start of that game week. Well, Coach, I know you're a busy man. I know you want everybody to love, will love to speak to you today. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Appreciate good it. Good luck to you guys. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks a lot, guys. That's the guy who's good with the Richmond Thanks. Spiders of the beautiful Queen City of Richmond, Virginia. Uh, Danny Rocco, and uh, he will be uh, hopefully taking down Virginia on uh, September 3rd at 3.30 against uh, Brock Mendenhall and the uh, Cavaliers. Yeah, well, yeah, Chris, I think that's going to be a heck of a game because you've got the Richmond Spiders um, head coach, and then you've got Brock Mendenhall, who's the new head coach at Virginia. He comes from a BYD mentality of you know what you play like a hard-nosed, tough football game. You, know, you play hard and tough and everything, and Bronco Mendehall is a guy who likes to play defense and everything. So how how do you think this game is going to play out? Well, if you're Rocco, if you're a Coach uh, Rocco, you know, I think you, you're going to probably learn from your experience last year playing the Maryland squad. Because basically, Virginia is going to be different because they're going to be like BYU. But it's still, you're still playing a former ACC. You're playing a, a Maryland used to be an ACC school, I think. Big Ten school, yeah. So basically, Maryland and Virginia always try to be the be the same in, in style of offense, but it's all depends on what you know what they got you know going down the road. So, so uh, yep. So they're going to take on Virginia first week, and then they got Norfolk State and Richmond, and then uh, then they got to go to Stony Brook. And they're going to the, uh, the uh, Sea Wolves up there on uh, on Long Island. <laughs> Long Island. Yeah, I love saying Long Island. Yeah. So uh, we're going to take a time out here. When we come back, we'll grab whoever we see coming down the road here. You, know, you are listening to the CAA Football Media Day live from the M&T Bank Stadium. This is our, starts our coverage of college football this year here on UrbanFanSports.com.